our disgraced paedophile pop star Gary Glitter faces a parole hearing today, which will take place behind closed doors. He'd been sentenced to 16 years in 2015 for sexually abusing three schoolgirls between 1975 and 1980. However, he was automatically released in February last year after serving half of his term, but was taken straight back to prison after breaching licence conditions by allegedly viewing downloaded images of young children. Joining us now is the lawyer for one of Glitter's victims, Richard Scorer, and child sexual abuse survivors advocate, Emma Jane Taylor. Thank you both so much thank for joining you. us. Um, Richard, um, thank you very much for, for your time. Can you, can you tell us what's going to happen today, what's going to take place, and the people you represent, what do they want to happen? Well, what we want to see happening today is, is that Glitter stays in prison. He's a danger to the public, in our view. Uh, he shouldn't be released. Uh, he should be kept in prison for as long as possible. That's the outcome that we want. In, in terms of what happens today, the problem uh, is that the whole process is shrouded in mystery. The parole board made a commitment a few years ago to be more transparent and more open in terms of their decision-making process, but that hasn't happened. It certainly hasn't happened in this case. It hasn't actually happened in many cases. We're supposed to have open justice in this country, but we don't have it really with parole board hearings. So the reality is we don't know uh, the basis on which the decision will be made. But I certainly hope that the decision will be to keep him in jail. Richard, it's so good to have you on. I'd like to bring Emma Jane Taylor in. Uh, Emma, I have to be really... They tell me, try not to lose it initially. Things like this, as a father of soon to be six, just break my heart and annoy me so much. I listen to people say, oh, let's rehabilitate him. No, 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 I don't, no, no, no. Let's lock this vile human being up. Let's, let's remember Thailand and eight-year-old girls. Let's remember him coming out on licence half a term. Serve your prison sentence. Serve 16 years. Come out, you do it again. Am I wrong or am I right, Emma, to say that certain people, right, do not deserve to be freed? And this is an absolute prime example where this country should stand up and say, sorry, don't want you having any liberty amongst us and our children. 100%, Jeremy, 100%. Child sexual abuse is not just an isolated incident that you get over. Being sexually abused as a child is a lifelong trauma that many survivors spend years trying to live through, many without support. So my focus on these conversations will always be for the child um, who was violated and stripped of their innocence. And I will always question these conversations what about the victims? Where is their focus? Why are we focusing so much on the paedophile? Uh, when you say, quite rightly, Jeremy, put him in prison for the rest of his life and protect children, help survivors, put more focus back into the reality of these conversations, not more money uh, on someone who's ruined so many lives. Why shouldn't he be seen now? I mean, I, it's I, just ridiculous I, to me. I, I couldn't agree. We seem to, Richard, we seem to get our priorities, if I'm being honest, wrong in this country. On the front page of The Sun today is that monster and coward, Calacane, who stabbed those two innocent students and then the... the uh, oh, I've got mental issues. I, I, you know, I'm getting manslaughter. And yet we'll all have an argument about things, virtue signalling and stuff that doesn't matter. Gary Glitter is a danger to society. Is there not... I mean, legally, it must be so frustrating. Is there not sense somewhere in the legal system that says, you've crossed a line, pal, and you can't come back? That's what worries me. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. And I think we do have a very distorted approach to, uh, you know, to, to, to serious crime. I mean, you know, th there will be some criminals where there is some prospect of reintegrating them into the community. But when you're talking about serious crime like this, uh, you know, offences against children, uh, you know, that is just not going to... Be possible. He's not. He's never not going to be a danger um, to children and 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 to the public at large. And he, you know, the longer we can keep him in prison, the better. And and I I completely agree with you. I think this whole uh, discussion has got to a very bad place. Uh, you know, when when we're we're, we're kind of uh, approaching this on the basis that he has the automatic right halfway through his sentence to be released. Uh, you know, when he's committed these appalling offences and, and has shown no remorse, that's very, very clear. And we've put evidence in front of the parole board uh, on precisely that point. He's shown no remorse. And it's very clear from his behaviour when he was released last time that he remains a serious danger to the public. So, look, I, you know, I hope the parole board do the right thing. But we, you're absolutely right to say we should never be in the position in the first place of somebody like this having some automatic right to come out halfway through their sentence. It's just wrong.
Richard, what kind of options will the parole board be looking at if they said, OK, we're convinced that he can be released from prison? Would that be under set conditions like last time? What, what do we know of what the outcomes could be? Well, the theory is that when a, a prisoner comes out halfway through their sentence, that they're released on licence, so they're released subject to certain conditions. And if they breach those conditions, as, as uh, Gary Glitter did uh, last time, then they can be recalled to prison. That's the theory. Of course, the reality is that probation services are actually very overstretched. And I, for, you know, for myself, I can't be, I don't think I can be confident. I don't think, the, you know, the public can be confident that somebody coming out on licence would not, you know, be a, at serious risk of reoffending. We've actually seen that in other, in other cases where serious criminals have been released on licence. So I, I am very uh, nervous about the actual capacity of the probation service to monitor uh, somebody like this effectively. We'll have to see what happens, and I hope he isn't released at all. But, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the issue, I think, that when somebody comes out, you know, is, is the monitoring actually going to be adequate? And I, and I have real concerns about that. I, th I think it's fair to say probation services are on a shoestring. But, but Emma, maybe, mm. I'm, maybe I'm too emotional on this subject. Rosie's far better out. But here's what I'm going to ask about the parole board. Why the hell isn't this public, Lee what, what What is that? Is that about his rights? I'd want to make sure that... The, what criteria have they followed? You know, I, I've, I've heard of parole boards in these instances. No disrespect to anybody. They haven't even had a child between them. I guarantee that the people who have children in the United Kingdom will want that piece of... to never be let out. And, I, and I, you sort of hope that people like these parole board people, you know, but we have no control over that. And that, to me, is quite frightening. It is really frightening. And when you consider what happens to a child as they develop into adult, most of them have had uh, delayed development of uh, maturity. They've been violated and groomed by someone who wanted to be seen in their life. And now that table's turned, they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be in the public eye for what they've um, done. But they really should be. That's the only way we're going to continue protecting children, continue supporting survivors. Who wants to put their child at risk of being abused by someone like Glitter? None of us. Um, so do the sensible thing. Understand this conversation. Understand the development of someone who's gone through any trauma as a child. Like I said at the beginning, when you've been abused, it's not an isolated incident that you just get over. You live with that for the rest of your life. And here we are looking at someone who wants to, who's looking at being released. No. Let's not release him. Let's put this to the public parole. Let everybody see, not just him. Why not get a victim to abuses. stand in front of a parole board and tell them, as you do so eloquently, just how messed up and ruined people's lives are for the sexual gratification of a monster? I'm sorry, it, I just I don't understand. And, and, and while I'm on it, Richard, just very quickly, can you please explain to me a legal system that says, right, Glitter, you're a, you're a paedophile, 16 years, oh, after eight, you're out. Why don't we just give him eight, then? It's pointless. Why do we not have a legal system that says you serve the time that you get given in court? Well, I completely agree. And, of course, when he was sentenced um, in, um, in 2015, of course, he had to be sentenced according to the law as it, as it was when, you know, when the crimes were um, committed. And, and, you know, that's part of the problem. There have been moves in, in the meantime to try to increase sentencing of serious offenders, but we haven't gone anything like far enough. And I completely agree with you. We just should not have a situation where somebody who commits these appalling offences, and, you know, my client was raped by him when she was 12, uh, raped multiple times when she was 12. Uh, you know, somebody committing those sorts of offences simply should not be eligible for early release in the first place. I just think it's fundamentally wrong, and we've got to change that. I think the really, really galling bit, Richard, is no remorse. Presumably, mm. the parole board take into account what, what he thinks himself, which is, I'm not, I'm not sorry I even did this. Well, I, I hope they will. But again, you know, I come back to the point that although we're supposed to have open justice in this country, we don't actually know uh, on what basis the parole board will make the decision. There was, no, In my view, there was no reason why they couldn't have had uh, you know, a public hearing in this case. We asked for a public hearing, that was refused. It was actually refused on the basis that they couldn't contact all of the victims and check whether that was something that was wanted. But the reality is that you could you could configure a public hearing in such a way that there wouldn't be any risk of, of, of you know,
you know, uh, of putting victim anonymity at risk. So, you know, they could have had a public hearing in reality. And, and that's, and that's my, that. and that's and my that's sort, wrong. that's my sort of thing, Richard. That if you if you looked at this from the outside, you'd go. Why is it a private hearing? Are, are we are we leaning towards you know? Let's be fair. I don't want to be fair to Gla Gary Glitter. I don't. I, I, I don't want some bunch of people who've never had a kid or spoken to somebody like Emma Jane and understand what you just said on our breakfast show. Can people just take a second here? He raped my client several times as a twelve-year-old. Yeah. You know, for politicians who spend their time pontificating, for virtue signalers who spend their time going, "Oh, this," just. Just think about that, right? And we live in a society where, oh, we'll let him out. No. And that's why I love the media, by the way, in this country, when people criticise the media, because I will tell you, without getting into trouble, right, that that parole board and any of this will be battered if they don't make the right decision, and it will go on and on, because it should do, because people have had enough. Kids are precious.